Today, I'm going to be explaining five backrooms levels that are home to the worst entities and creatures. These levels have specifically bad ones and more dangerous ones than normal, along with dangerous environments. Just consider these levels ones that you should avoid at all costs. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy the video, please leave a like. And if you like longer videos, tell me in the comments what other ones I should do. Without further blabbering, I will see you at the end of the video in the outro section. Backrooms level 318 from the fandom is classified as a class question mark question mark question mark question mark question mark difficulty and is very mysterious and very obscure. That is the only backrooms level with that classification, by the way, so you know you're in for a doozy. The classification graphic says that you're safe now and everything is okay and it's just you. So obviously, some kind of thing or creature or entity is trying to create this level and run it. The level physically takes the appearance of a derealized looking sprawl of houses. The houses are colorful, but lifeless, and they seem to resemble those houses from I Spy books and those old weird claymation style movies, and some of them even have like a Mr. Rogers vibe to them. But overall, the level seems very fake, almost animated in a way. A soft song plays the entire time you're here, and it's almost like a carnival sound. And the danger of the level tends to get worse and worse and worse the deeper you get into it. This video is a whopping 40 minutes long, and I know for a fact that you will get thirsty at some point while you're watching it. Thankfully for you and your hydration, gamer sups. It's here to make it all better, man. You already know the drill by now, but Gamer Sups is a super tasty and delicious drink that'll keep you going all day long. It's got no sugar. It's got less than a calorie. There's no fillers or any of that stuff inside. And it's absolutely and utterly, utterly delicious. I've been known to crank a cup or three cups back and edit for like five hours straight. So if you want to grab some of this amazing nectar, you're actually in luck because right now there's a massive Valentine sale going on. For the next seven days, you can get 22% off your order on GamerSub's website using code Brugly at checkout. Again, 22% off at checkout using code Brugly. There's so many flavors that you could choose from. You could go with my personal favorite, Blowhole Blast, if you are uh, if you want to. Anyways, if you are going to be alone this Valentine's Day like me, why not cuddle up with a brand new tub of gamer subs to make all the pain go away? Again, that's code Brugly at checkout for 22% off your order. Get it while the getting's good because it only lasts for the next seven days. So you get seven days for that 22% off. Do it, if you please. All right. With all that said, back to the video. When you get sent here originally, you'll get this overwhelming calming sensation that just makes you feel at home, almost like you've been here, or that you remember you being here. And this calming sensation will just get more and more pronounced the longer you're here, to where eventually you walk so deep and you're so comfortable that you just fade into the level. More on that later though. The actual houses that are here can be fully explored on the inside and the outside. And inside of them, you'll find some pretty unnerving stuff. Mainly, each house is empty, like completely barren of any resources, any furniture, any dust. It, it just seems like no one's ever lived here. It's empty 100%. There is no dust, no trash, no sign of human existence. And most of them are completely abandoned like this. Except for some houses have staircases and fireplaces and that kind of thing. But in general, these houses are safe to stay in, but staying on this level as a whole is not safe and you'll see why in a second. Just make sure you don't get stuck here for too long and you'll be all right. The paths that connect the houses and the roads in front of the houses are all made out of a weird concrete gravel type mixture and all the houses and roads are placed on an expanse of grassy hills. The grass itself is fake like plastic and it seems like it's literally just ripped from an I Spy book. It's very similar to level 94, but with a much different layout because the houses here are more neighborhood-like and, and not really dotted randomly like level 94. The level document is written from the perspective of some kind of entity or creature or something. Quote, it's time to wake up. This isn't the reality you're familiar with. That reality is fake. It's time to embrace the real world. End quote. That's a sentence that's right in the middle of this article. So as you can tell, this level is some kind of trap that you as a wanderer perceive to be real and not dangerous, but it is. 
while you're journeying through this level, you'll believe that the surroundings here are real life. You'll think it's 100% reality. It'll seem more and more so the deeper you walk. And just like the level name says, you will need to wake up in order to realize that it is a trap. The third paragraph of this level entry says, quote, Now that you're here, I suppose I should show you what's new. Everything is simply beautiful. You can fly, teleport, do anything you ever wanted to. Don't worry, there's no fake ending to be found this time. End quote. Yeah, it's totally not creepy or unnerving or anything like that. Not at all. The level is also thought to be infinite since the edges of it have not been found yet, but the deeper you get inside of it, the more fake it'll actually look, but you'll be under the level spell and trance, so you won't be able to tell it. At the start of the level where you begin, the houses look like they're from real life, but eventually they'll get to where they look completely fake, like a small display someone made for a project at school, but you will still think they're real. As I said earlier, the level plays a soft, cartoony sound through the whole thing, which this might be the source of the trance, we're not really sure. We're also not sure where the sound comes from, if it's speakers or if it's just the atmosphere. So here we have a whole level that looks like an uncanny, I spy, Dr. Seuss background with strange effects that make you think you're safe at home. But who or what is literally controlling it? Who is writing this? Who is making the level go around? What is it? Well, in the entity section in this article, we might get some insight on that. The page says, quote, You want to know more about me? Well, I suppose you deserve to know. Hello, Gary. I'm what they call the Awakened. I will. <laughs> I made this perfect reality. I don't really have an awesome looking true form. I'm just this human, this guy in a brown jacket. And I'm always smiling. You'll never be fully dressed without one, you know. That's the only feature that really stands out about my body, though. I don't have eyes, just a smile. The rest is just a shadow, although I can see." End quote. So from that entity's disturbing self-description, we can pretty much deduce that it takes the appearance of some kind of vague humanoid shape with a jacket and pants. And the most noticeable feature of this entity is its massive smile carved into its face. Because besides that, it's not got any eyes or shape, and then it finishes itself by saying the rest of its body is shadow. So we can assume the creature is a physical form that takes the appearance of a shadow with a smile that kind of looks human, and that's all we know. It would probably look something like what a smiler with a body would look like. It's terrifying to think that that creature controls and traps people here. The end of the page has a hidden link that takes you to one more sentence. Quote, it doesn't matter anymore. There is no end to this nightmare. There is no home. There is no true ending. That's how it's always going to be if things keep going at this rate. And I know for a fact that things will keep going on like this. Go. Just go. Leave. You don't deserve a good ending if you can't make one yourself. I guess it's safe to say that you've overstayed your welcome. Goodbye, Gary. Never come back. End quote. So yeah, it sounds like this entity is uh, kind of sad, to be honest. Maybe he doesn't want Gary to leave. Maybe bro just needs to take a chill pill. To enter the level, you have to wake up. And to exit, there aren't any. I don't know what else to say, There's, you have to stay here. It's unknown what both of those mean, what wake up and stay here mean, but we can assume that it's really hard to enter and the exit is also really hard to attain. So for the time being, it seems as if you're gonna be forced to explore this uncanny expanse of hills, houses, empty streets, and loneliness while being talked to by a shadow thing with a smile on his face. Cool. Personally, I love this level and I think it's really good. I think it's Agent Anonymous's best work I've read. I've read a ton of their levels and I've gone over them and I 100% recommend checking the article below, reading it for yourself. This level actually is very, very well done and I think it speaks a lot to the community of the back rooms where sometimes levels are made, you know, too kid friendly when in reality, the back rooms is a living hellscape. It's, it's not kid friendly, it's not safe, it's scary. And I think this level does a good job of expressing that in a cool, horrifying, liminal way. You know, the house is here, the fake ambience, it's all perfect. Hope y'all enjoyed it as much as I did. Level 99 of the back rooms is classified as highly unstable and very unpredictable. And it's such a strange place that it can't even be given a regular class, you know, like one, two, three, or four. It's just unstable and unsecure. The level takes the overall appearance of a twisted and entangled environment full of anomalous properties and locations. 
Think of chutes and ladders, but with liminal space world boxes. And it's chocked full of a bunch of special parts and zones. The two main areas are a dreamy and surreal looking landscape, and the other one is the other several subspaces that can be accessed from those dreamy landscapes. These subspaces have warped and blended together, and you'll hear all about it, no worries, I'm gonna go over all of them in this video. This level has a nostalgic effect, similar to the one on level 18, if you remember that. So it's thought that because of that, it might physically be close to level 18, we don't know, it's level 99 in the ranking, I don't know. But anyways, this nostalgic effect causes the level to produce uh, places and things that the Wanderer has seen before, or something very familiar to them. For instance, it might be your elementary school, or your childhood house, or something like that. It somehow knows the places that you've been, and has access to all the memories. The first part of the level, where you will start at, will look to be a plane of grass that goes out in all directions. This grass plane is the last normal thing that you're gonna see, so prepare yourself. But as you're walking through this empty grass plane, you'll notice that it feels empty and alone. It's just green fake looking grass as far as you can see. And as you're walking down these plains, the level will begin to produce black circles in the sky. These are called wormholes. These wormholes look like black smudges, and they will not go away until you jump inside of them or enter them. If you hesitate to jump inside of one, something called a text hallucination will appear in the sky. Now, this is an effect that happened back on level 78 as well, but it's when strange lines of text will actually pop up in the physical sky. Like, you're not just seeing things, they're actually there, and it'll say different things. The text seems ethereal and foreboding, and you're just really scared to look at it for some reason. Like, it makes you feel uncomfortable. Sometimes the text will say negative things, and sometimes it'll be calming and nostalgic. But the text kind of makes you want to jump into the wormholes. It's almost like it's luring you into them. This text effect can happen in any of the subspaces on this level as well. But when you enter these wormholes, you will feel instantly dizzy, and you'll be overcome with vertigo. You'll feel like you can't stand, you get all dizzy and numb, and you start to fall into an infinite black void for an unknown amount of time until you reach your destination within these dream subspaces, which I'll get into in a second. But there are three anomalous properties that you'll experience while exploring these subspaces. Those are eye decals, sensor rectangles, and sky textures, as well as some of the text that I mentioned. Now, eye decals are manifestations of real eyes, again, similar to level 78. But these eyes look like they're watching you and everything else around you. They're constantly moving and blinking, some are floating, some are just on the ground, some are attached to walls and other objects. It just depends. The eyes are very uncanny and unnerving to look at, so try not to. Now, sensor rectangles are 2D black anomalies in the shape of a rectangular void. They appear randomly throughout the sky and the ground and windows inside these dream subspaces, and they seem to have no purpose but to block out random things that don't make any sense. Sky textures are the last anomaly that you might face while exploring these subspaces, and these are randomly and briefly appearing cloud textures that will show themselves where doors or windows or walls or ceilings or floors should be. The sky textures often appear inside of doors and windows and walls, and if you listen really closely to them, you can hear the faint sound of wind blowing through clouds. These sky textures are very unknown and strange. No one knows if you can walk into them, and no one knows why they appear, but you should probably try to stay away from them. I'll touch more on them later, though. But now that you know about all the strange anomalies that you might find while exploring these subspaces, let's talk about the actual dreamy areas that you'll have to explore to get out of the level. There are six different dream spaces that you will encounter while being here, and dream spaces are the name given to the sub-layers of the main level, and these locations are accessed by those wormholes. This is where those feelings of nostalgia really come into play, since each of these six sub-areas is personalized for every wanderer who comes here. The sub-areas are the grassy halls, last day of school, the store, the stairwell, playground, and the walk. And let me explain them all real quick. So grass halls typically consist of one large building with rooms and corridors made out of beige drywall and there is fake grass on the floor. The grass is said to look fake and real at the same time, 
which is strange. But inside of this building, some of the walls and the windows and doors will have the appearance of sky textures, which will give this strange outdoor, indoor vibe to people exploring. This has been known to cause derealization effects, so watch out for that as well. You also might find windows and stuff like that that opens to an outside that looks to be a plain of grass and trees. You can actually climb out of the windows and explore those grassy areas. They're just another subspace access from within this subspace. Yeah, I know it gets crazy, but it's going to get even crazier. Under the grass on the floor is a carpet like material that this grass grows out of. And it's unknown how this happens. It's not dirt. It is fake grass actually growing out of carpet. I don't know, whatever. That's, that's crazy. In this sub area, you may run across a text hallucination or a sky texture, but it's pretty rare. These grass hallways are typically pretty safe. The last day of school is what looks to be an elementary school, specifically the one you went to, that looks like it's on its last day. The ambience is very calming. You can hear soft chatter of students talking and shifting papers and bags. You can't see anything like that though, you just hear it. But the classrooms and hallways and everything here is very vibrant. It's got this huge vibrant vibe to it and it's similar to how life used to look to all of us as kids. You know, when we were younger, everything was bright and glowy. That's how it looks here. The rooms and halls will literally give you that feeling that you had on the last day of school. You know, that huge adrenaline rush that summer's about to happen. That is the vibe you get here. There's also an outside area to this last day of school subspace where you can literally walk out of the school and you can find your childhood house inside of the subspace. Like you can walk from the school to your house and it's all fully explorable. Just don't stay too long or you might never leave. You might be tempted to stay forever, which is not good. The store is exactly what it sounds like, and it can be accessed from the last day of school subspace. It's an older looking store that's always after closing time. So it's dark outside and it's got this quiet, eerie silence inside. Here, you might find eye decals, mushrooms, and some text hallucinations in the sky, perhaps. This is one of the more basic subspaces though. Now the stairwell is a very anomalous subspace, but it seems to be in the shape of a vertical staircase that goes up and down forever. The light in the staircase does not come from actual lights, it comes from sky textures that appear. That is the most common one here, and you'll likely also see some eye decals as well while climbing the stairs. This expanse of staircase gives people the sense of dread and sadness, and it just makes everybody feel like they should give up for some reason. Again. It's unknown why, but it's not recommended to come here because exiting is difficult. The playground is an interesting subspace because it kind of acts as a hub for the level. Instead of it being a hub, like the actual hub level, here you get on a slide and you slide down it into a wormhole and you'll be sent to a different dream subspace. This is the easiest way to travel from subspace to subspace and once you find this place, you can pretty much do whatever. The slide seems to be an indoor play place type area with a massive sprawl of different plastic slides, all of which take you to different subspaces, some of them discovered, some of them not. Be careful which ones you get on, that way you don't get lost too deep into these sub areas. And lastly, the walk. Now the walk is made up of a checkerboard floor that is floating in a place that looks like the void. I don't know if it's the void or not, but it looks like it. On each side of the floor, there are large mushrooms towering over you. The path is completely straight, but it looks like it curves up and down, but since it's so long, you can't actually tell. Now this walk is very important because it is the only way of exiting the level. Like you have to come through all those other subspaces I mentioned and find this walk and you have to do the whole thing, walk the entire way to escape. The only things here that you might see are eye decals and those mushrooms appearing. You might also find a random wormhole or two, but at the end of the walk, there are several doors that open to different levels and that's how you escape. That's the exit. And speaking of that, let's talk about the entrance and exits. To enter the level, you can no clip on level 96 and you'll have a chance of being sent here. And to exit, you gotta go through all the subspaces to get here, then walk the entire thing and you'll find those sets of doors at the end. And the doors can open to a ton of different levels like zero, four, and nine and so on. So pick carefully. There are no actual entities here that have been documented besides these strange eyes, maybe a shadow figure or two, and maybe a lost human that's turned into an insanity. Uh, that might be all this here, we don't know, it's not confirmed. But yeah, level 99 
It's like a huge game of shoots and ladders that's made up of weird liminal spaces that are all connected and shoved together. I really love how you can get to each different part without no clipping. It makes the level feel so big and just expansive. I think this level's fantastic. This is what a liminal space level should be like. Hope you enjoyed it. I know I did. Level 5.3, or the Decaying Decadence, is the first sub-level that you're gonna run into after being stuck in level 5 for too long. Especially if you walk too deep inside of a hallway, you'll eventually come here. This level has been classified as a class 4E environmental difficulty for it being unsafe, very very unstable, but with a low entity count. However, that entity is a handful, and I'll tell you all about it later. The sublevel is an extremely elusive one, and almost nobody can find it on purpose. You can't just go run into level 5 until you run across it, like you only accidentally can come here. And the level looks like a large, dark, and cold abandoned mansion, full of holes and collapsing rooms and hallways that all seem to be surrounded in the void. These holes and these cracks lead directly to the void level, and if you were to jump through those cracks, you would quite literally be there inside of the black void. It's completely unknown how the sublevel got to be so destroyed, so crumbly, so desolate, or so abandoned, or how it's so unstable, or even just why it's falling apart. But you know, knowing me, I'm gonna get into some theories on that later, just don't worry. There is very little lighting inside these hallways and rooms, and the entire place is just this one old crumbled mess. The air here smells old and dry, and there's dust flying around constantly. The light sources aren't even connected to anything here, but they can still somehow turn on and off randomly, which is just like, <laughs> how? How do they do that? Then again, this is the back rooms, and it doesn't have to make sense. The halls in the rooms are also full of old furniture, things like beds and couches and tables and chairs and that sort of thing. And you might even run across a few floating pieces of furniture that are suspended in air, like somebody's using the force on them, they're just stuck. Now I'm sure this level's connection to the void has something to do with its crumbling and something to do with the floating chairs, but again, more on that later. While walking through these abandoned hallways inside this mansion, you'll begin to hear echoes of a disembodied voice. The source of this voice is unknown, and it's often not even actual words that are spoken, it's kind of just sounds or murmurings. Things like laughter or crying can be heard. Most of the times the voices sound sad or even traumatized, and it seems like they're trying to speak English, although some people have claimed to hear Spanish and German too. Now there's another part of the level that is above the hallways and the rooms in this mansion part, and this part takes the appearance of a large attic. Now, the attic extends through the middle section of this mansion, and it can be accessed by one of those pull down ladder things that come out of the ceiling. The attic is always freezing cold, and it is the source of the cold temperature for the entire level. It stays at around 14 degrees Fahrenheit, or negative 10 degrees Celsius if you don't speak American, and it should be avoided at all costs. I mean that in all honesty, do not, I repeat, do not go to the attic. Inside the attic, you'll find broken glass and boxes and just a tight, cramped environment. There's non-Euclidean geometry up here, so if you're trying to walk or crawl through it, you're eventually going to end up where you started, and you cannot just go straight in a linear path. The low temperatures and the broken glass are actually not the real reasons that you should avoid the attic, because lurking around in this attic is an entity known in the back rooms only as cold. Now this cold entity is a humanoid-esque entity with purely white skin, very elongated limbs, and a triangular head that is shaped almost like Phineas's head from Phineas and Ferb. Cold can seemingly teleport inside this level, and it'll teleport near a wanderer only if the wanderer knows of its existence. So now that thousands of you know about cold, it'll, it can teleport to you. I'm sorry, I, I had to tell you, I, I couldn't keep it in any longer. Once cold captures its prey with its hands, it'll use its sharp triangle face to headbutt and to stab that prey in the face. And then after that, it'll drag the prey back to the attic to do whatever it does with it. Eat it, or I don't, I don't know. Cold is very smart, and it knows the level very well. So if you're going to get stuck in this level at all, you're going to need to find an exit ASAP. 
to avoid being spiked by a cold's head. Now, other than cold, there are not really any entities in large numbers. You might see a hound or a smiler, but other than that, you're not going to see anything. Cold's background and story is virtually unknown, and only a few encounters with the entity have been reported, so tread lightly when walking on this level. There are no colonies here, since it would pretty much be impossible to form one, since the entire level is crumbling and there's a decaying vibe, plus cold wouldn't like that. To enter the level, it's literally just luck based. You can just randomly be walking around level 5 and you'll get sent here by accident, or you could just walk too deep into a hotel room inside the level and you'll be, you could be sent here. I don't know, I don't know what to tell you. Now to exit, you can walk in this level into one of those void pits where everything is cracking and you can go there, or you can do the actual good exit and find an old phone lying around in the rubble, touch it, and you'll be sent back to the regular level 5. And this is the most common and most safe and most reliable way to leave the level. So yeah, this level, level 5.3, is this crumbling mansion full of strange old artifacts, weird rips in the space-time continuum, openings to the void, and a strange entity that lives in the attic. Probably one of the best sub-levels I've read, to be honest. Leave a like if you enjoyed that one too. Level 73 of the Backrooms, or the Redlands, as it's been nicknamed, is a level that is extremely dangerous, and I cannot state that enough. It is extremely dangerous. It's been given a Class 5 difficulty for being unsafe and unsecure, and infested with scary entities. And I'll get into all the entities later on. In fact, the first single line on this document says, quote, do not go searching for level 73, end quote. But let me tell you all about it anyway, so you can figure out why you should never search for it. The level's article was written and uploaded from deep inside a castle that's located in the middle of this level. The people that wrote the article, they ventured through the various parts of this level to get to their current location, so they have pretty decent knowledge of what the level looks like and the dangers that lie within, and their description of what the level looks like is what I'll be going over in this video. Level 73 is the 74th level inside the backrooms. It's most commonly known amongst wanderers as the Redlands because of its dark, red-stained grass and sky features. The level takes place on some sort of island with a large ocean surrounding it. The island as of right now is the only accessible and searched through part of the level since the ocean part around it has not been explored yet, apparently the water should not be touched or entered at all due to deadly aquatic anomalies. But the island part of the level is so hard to explore and it's just a very volatile place to be, mainly due to the entities that call this place home. The island itself is a dark red grassy island in the shape of a large circle. Scattered across the island along the red grass are trees and small shrubs that look dead and decayed. The trees and the grass and the shrubs all are circling the island and in the middle of this circle is a large stone castle. Now the entity density on this level is estimated to be one entity per 35 square feet. Let me repeat that one thing every 35 feet. So pretty much there's going to be constantly entities around you somewhere in your eyesight. But I'm sure you're asking, you know, what kind of creatures actually live here? Why is it so dangerous? There are smilers, death moths, clumps, dullers, hounds and skin stealers and camo crawlers. Even death rats have been seen jumping through the grass. These are the most commonly reported ones, but those are just to name a few. There are also strange unknown creatures that have been documented to be here, like strange tall skinny humanoids that run ridiculously fast, like 50 miles an hour, and just snatch up wanderers without even seeing what they are. Again, no idea what they are, but now you know about them. Obviously, all those entities are dangerous in their own right, so when you get sent to this level, the second your feet hit the ground, you need to run as fast as you can through the field to get to the castle. Level 73 is pretty much in a perpetual state of darkness, and there's no day or night cycle whatsoever. The only light you actually have here is a full moon that casts this reddish glow across the cloudy sky. The moon itself never moves and never changes in its light intensity, giving the sky this fake, uncanny type of vibe. Now, right under what I just said, there's a sentence that states this. 
you do not want to use an artificial light source and that you do not want to see at all until you get to the doors of the castle. And I'm sure as you can tell, being on an island with entities, you don't want to turn a flashlight on because that would just signal that you're there. Like a moth to a flame, you know, they would just run at you and devour you. But I love how it says you do not want to see because that's that's so scary, you know? If you can't see, then I'm sure the entities can't see as well. But the second you turn that flashlight on, they'll swarm you and they can see you. So like I said, you get here, your feet hit the ground, you sneak around and run in a straight line until you get to that castle. The silhouette of the castle is visible the second you get here, it's shrouded in that reddish moonlight glow. And it is imperative that you do not deviate or move from a straight line and that you do not stop running because of the entities. When, and more likely if, you do reach the doors of the castle, you need to bang on them as loud as you can, and then it'll like automatically open up for you. It's unknown if the castle is an entity itself, or if it just has sentience, or somebody's watching, we don't know. The castle has been named the Silver Castle, and it is the only known building on this red island. The way it was built, or who made it, is unknown, but it's a rather expansive, gothic-style castle that is fully furnished and fully lit with candles and stuff like that. The castle has cold stone hallways and rooms with beds and huge halls and that kind of thing, and overall it's pretty lavishly decorated for being in the middle of an entity-infested island. It even has a main dining hall and these six huge bedroom areas. There are three floors to the castle and an attic area, all of which are accessible except the attic. And that's because a level exclusive creature made that area off limits. But I'll talk about that in a second. There are windows that look out to the island from inside the castle, but the article says, do not look outside in big bold letters. So I'm assuming you should listen to that. There are fresh water wells and barrels of food and grains located in the kitchen area here, and overall it seems to be a place that you can stay for a while and relax, even though there's you know horrifying things happening outside. You can chill inside here. Now that level exclusive entity that I mentioned lives inside this castle, and its name is Koran or Koran or Corin. C-O-R-A-N is how it's spelled. He is a large entity in a humanoid shape that is very muscular. He has thick black hair and two two horn-like appendages sticking out of his head. One of his arms is gone, and in its place is a chain that is just shoved into his stub, which sounds pretty dope, I'm not gonna lie. He's very nice to wanderers, and he seems to be a protector in a way. Now, in a morbid twist of fate, he's missing both his eyes due to a large scratch across his face that he got from fighting off an entity. So instead, he wears a black bandana around the missing eyes. Apparently, his goal is to eradicate all entities on this level, which is pretty cool, but I think somebody might need to help bro out. I mean, it's like one versus 5,000 right now. I don't know if he's doing very effective stuff. If you want to enter this horrific level for some reason, whether you're crazy, whether you lost your mind, or whether you just want to put this level as a notch on your belt, some have reported being on level 14 or level 6 and no clipping into this field here, randomly. But remember, if you do no clip into the field, you have to run in a straight line to the castle. And do not hesitate, do not deviate, run. And to exit, this is where it gets pretty sad because you simply cannot. There has not been an exit found, and I'm sure if someone finds it, they'll, they'll put it on the website, but as of right now, you either will get consumed by the Entity Horde, or you will live out your days in the castle. Level 72 of the Backrooms is the 73rd level in the catalog, and it's classified as a Class 2 difficulty, with an environmental difficulty of 2 out of 5, an Entity difficulty of 2 out of 5, and an Exit difficulty of 3 out of 5. Although, you'll see why later, why that really doesn't matter, because it's actually really dangerous here. Definitely more so than a class 2. The level consists of a large island smack dab in the middle of a shallow ocean. The island seems to take the rough shape of a crab, so its design is kind of like in a crab shape. And the level gets its name from that shape, and that's where the level gets its name, Call of the Crabs, from. The ocean surrounding the island is virtually empty, with little to no life in it. It's just water. And it goes out in all directions, for as far as your eyes can see, specifically around 3.7 miles, or 6 kilometers. At the edge of that 3.7 miles, the distance of the ocean instantly just drops off into a waterfall that drops into a void. 
So think of this as like a floating ocean with an island in the middle, and on the edges, it just drops off into a void. The actual island itself is a sandy island, and it's comprised of several sand dunes and palm trees and bushes and pieces of coral and seashells and all those kind of things. And there are also some other things here that I'll talk about later, just, just know that it's not that safe. The level itself is also very hot constantly and very humid. It stays at literally a solid 100 degrees Fahrenheit or 38 Celsius at all times, and it kind of feels like you're in an oven. The water here is also salt water, which means that the constant breeze that's blowing the air on the island will make your skin dry out and you'll get very dehydrated since it's going to be salty air. You pretty much look like Patrick and SpongeBob underneath the heat lamp. Now, randomly, around every two-ish weeks, the level seems to produce rain clouds through an unknown means, and it'll rain for a few minutes at a time. This is all of the fresh water that can be attained on this level. So if you're trapped here and you can't store that fresh water or grab it somehow, I don't know what you're gonna do, you're screwed. Now, ironically, underneath the island, there are hundreds of fresh water aquifers of different sizes. The bigger ones are deeper underground. These aquifers are pretty much impossible to get to for every wanderer who comes here because no one brings shovels or equipment. Like, why would you bring that stuff while you're exploring the back rooms? But anyways, if you don't have that kind of stuff, they're just down there. But these aquifers are where the plankton and other organisms like crabs come out of on this level. And the crabs that live here go down to those aquifers for the food source, which are the plankton and creel. Now, speaking of crabs, there are thought to be eight species of crabs that live on this small island. Now, there's only eight species, but there are supposedly millions of crabs crawling around. There are Dungeness crabs, flat top crabs, ghost crabs, gold crabs, hermit crabs, Pacific mole crabs, red king crabs. All of these are real life species that are found here. And those are just the recognizable species. There are other ones too. Each one of those crabs tends to only eat the krill and the plankton that's below the island, but they're also seemingly genetically coded to eat themselves and their friends. Like they'll, they'll eat each other. They will literally cannibalize one another. That's right. Got a little crab on crab crime going there. Now these crabs that I just mentioned are typically pretty safe. They're not that dangerous. The only reason you'd have to fear them is if you have a fear of crabs because there are literally you know hundreds of thousands of them crawling around the small island constantly. But there is a level exclusive crab that isn't safe at all. Like it's completely not. And you should be afraid of this one. The Aurora crab behaves pretty similarly to a poison dart frog from real life because this crab is very colorful, it's very bright, and it's very unsafe to be near. Its shell and body are this wonderful array of shiny colors and pigments, but it's the colors themselves that are the danger because they seem to be some kind of toxin because if you touch that toxic color, you will get a severe reaction or rash to whatever part of your body touched it. But it doesn't stop at a simple rash. Of course it doesn't. You see, the rash is just the beginning. After it starts, your blood from the inside of your body will start to seep out of you in different orifices. Like literally right out of your skin pores, it'll just start dripping out. Think of somebody wringing out a wet washcloth, except this is your body being wrung out and it's not water coming out of you, it's the red stuff inside of you, if that makes sense. Now, ironically, the Aurora crab is actually pretty safe and docile, as in it doesn't attack people outright, its shell is the only dangerous part about it. And it only is dangerous if you touch it. If you see something bright, don't touch it unless you want to literally get drained of all your juices. Now, even beyond that, there are whispers from people who have been to this level that say beyond the ocean, where it water falls off into that void below, there is a gigantic crab-like creature that's been seen stepping out of it. All that's been seen is the giant black silhouette at nighttime of huge crab legs slowly walking around the ocean. We're not sure if these reports are real or if it's just a tale to get people not to come here, but as you can see, that would be a terrifying sight to see when you're just kind of like sleeping on an island. You see giant stick-shaped legs walking around. That's terrifying. So to summarize, this level is an island shaped like a crab in the middle of a shallow ocean, which itself is floating in the middle of a void. And the only things on this island are millions of crabs sprawling around constantly. There's one species of colorful crab that if you touch it, you'll pretty much leak your insides. 
and there's thought to be a giant crab-like creature that walks around at nighttime randomly doing whatever whatever it does. We have no idea. So yeah, that makes that makes perfect sense to me. Love it. Now there's supposedly a community here on this level called New Crabland that just has around 20 people. Apparently they're pretty friendly and they just chill on the island most of the time. To enter the level, you can be on level 75 and find a roasted crab and consume it and then you'll wake up here. And if you want to exit, that's where it gets pretty tricky because you really and truly can't. Essentially, you're trapped on this island. You're marooned. If you were like a pirate, you'd be marooned here on this crab infested place forever, slowly running out of fresh water until you either get cooked by the sun or consumed by that giant crab or something along those lines. So if you find the exit, tell everybody because that'd be a nice thing to do, right? A lot of wanderers get to this point and they can't get past it. So be warned.